Good morning or good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for this OSLC community webcast. Today we're going to be discussing uh, the Eclipse Leo Pearl modules. We actually have what we've described as three mini-casts, each being about well, a little less than 10 minutes. And so we will go through these in, in order that you see here on the screen. They will be, there will be a chance to ask questions at the, each of, at the end of each presentation. And the third will be a roundtable discussion with uh, both Max and Stephanie, who are, who are our two presenters, as well as Olivier Berger and uh, Mike Fiedler. My name is Sean Kennedy, and I'm just here to be a talking head. So I'm going to transfer control to Max so that you can begin your presentation. When we, um, when we post these later on, they will be posted to YouTube. We are being recorded right now. They will be posted as three individual items, so you'll, so you'll be able to uh, make use of the three short webcasts as you need. All right, Max, please take it away. All right. Let me see if I can get the application sharing to go. Crossing my fingers. All right, looks like we have success. I still don't see anything. Yeah, give me a second to. Here we go. Okay. Okay, does everybody see the first slide? Yes, I, I see it. Okay. <clears throat> so my name's, uh, let's see, Max Vulcan. There's my nice picture. Uh, I'm a release engineer for IBM Rational Software. And uh, here's the agenda for today, uh, the introduction which will follow, uh, what services the modules provide, a layout, uh, some other examples, et cetera, et cetera. And we'll move on. Uh, again, my name is Max Vulcan. I'm a release engineer for the ClearCase and ClearQuest products uh, that IBM sells. Uh, my main responsibility has been the automation that we use to build these products. Uh, my favorite tool for automation is Perl. I've been uh, programming with Perl for 15 years. And... Uh, uh, and the motivation uh, has been that uh, we're uh, migrating from ClearQuest to RTC, which is Rational Team Concert, for our defect tracking. And we had some automation that, that we uh, use with ClearQuest that needed to be migrated to uh, Team Concert. So uh, in trying to do that re-implementation, I started down the road of using OSLC as the key method to interact with Team Concert. Uh, so in doing so, I wanted to provide some module, you know, produce a module that I could then reuse for other purposes. And that's where we're at today is that uh, I is to present the modules that I've put together to try and that I use to eventually do this integration work. And uh, <clears throat> once I got the RTC modules working, then uh, I re-implemented, I did an implementation of similar functionality with the OSLC interface for ClearQuest. Uh, so what services do the modules provide? Uh, my main goal was to, to, to do querying uh, using the you know, actually where you specify the query, not so much using a predefined query, and and then also to do update of work items or change requests, depending if you're in Team Concert or ClearQuest. Um, since OSLC is based on REST, I started off uh, by, I found a module that does the REST 
part of the world, uh, which provided methods uh, for the get, put, patch, post, and delete. And then I've then layered on top of that module to do these OSLC modules. Um, one of the key uh, value adds above just using the REST module was that I figured out how to do the authentication that uh, Team Concert and ClearQuest typically use. Uh, with RTC, they do something called form-based authentication. Uh, so you actually get a, you know, it's sort of similar to the UI that you get when you use Team Concert. I don't know how many people have used RTC, but you get prompted with a form on the web page. You type in your credentials, and you say submit, and then that authenticates you, you with a cookie. So the module does that. Uh, meth does that behavior by tying into some of the redirection logic that was provided in the uh, HTTP client uh, module that the REST client is also layered upon top of. Um, <clears throat> the module also implements a service discovery mechanism that's provided uh, in the OSLC spec when it can to learn URLs that you would then use for later queries. Uh, so the general layout here is to be extendable for not just Team Concert and ClearQuest. So uh, it uses the object-oriented architecture with uh, modules consuming methods and things from other modules that provide general services across the suite. Uh, so the path structure here is that Lilo is the uh, top-level directory. From there we have an OSLC directory. And then based on the products that we're going to be interacting with, uh, you would have a directory and a module for each product. And then since each service provider can do more than just configuration management, I, that's what there's like a domain uh, under each product. So in, in uh, so like in the case that we're dealing with now, we're only dealing with change management. So I have a cm.pm that's under each product. And then at the bottom, there is an rdf.pm, which is a module that I've written to mostly just take the the RDF XML responses you get from the service provider and try and convert that into something that's more Perl-like that you then would use in your Perl script. It is not does not implement any of the other larger RDF parsing modules that are out there. Uh, so the so the, so the exactual modules that I'm prov that are being provided. So the high level there's the OSLC.pm, and its main method is a credential method that uh, lets you set tell the module what the user and password are that you're going to authenticate with. And then from here we have the RTC and a CQ module that most that provide the root services method. And that's the one where you can root services is how you query and find out what services the service provider will provide. And then, as, uh, and then here's the some of the methods that are provided by the RDF module I mentioned. Uh, and inside, so here, like, there's a response to get the query results and query result by title identifier. Those would be the typically the key methods that are interesting here. Uh, I'll speak to that a little bit more in the future slides. And then uh, here's the some of the APIs that I found useful uh, when we're talking with the change management part of RTC. Uh, so in in this case, you can uh, get service providers, their services. There's a, a part of the services document is what query capabilities that are there. Uh, so there, and then eventually uh, we see here an item called LSLC where, and that's the, the key mechanism that you do to do uh, on the fly queries. And then from there, being that we're dealing with uh, RTC and its key, uh, its key record type is called work item. So I did some 
APIs that are specific to RTC and the fact that you can ask for a specific work item. You can update a specific work item. And then in RTC, there are other uh, data types that are, that are useful to query uh, because you need them to eventually build up larger queries. And those deal with enumerations, uh, states, resolutions, iterations. Uh, so there's APIs here to look up those specific items based on like the human readable name so that you can then get the internal representation and then use that in the queries later. Similarly, for ClearQuest, uh, the same set of like service provider uh, style methods and query capability and the OSLC where method. So up to that point, those would be generally, should generally apply to any OSLC provider. But then uh, similarly in ClearQuest, their main record type is called change request. So the, uh, the ClearQuest does have lots of other different record types, but the, the main one that you use uh, to keep track, do defect tracking is the change request type. So the, I have an API to, to request a specific change request and then also to correspondingly update one uh, once you have one. Uh, the next is to give you an example of how you would uh, write use these APIs in your script. And here is an example with a team concert. So as with Perl and, and you're using object-oriented interfaces, you start off by uh, calling the new calling the new method to create the object. Uh, once you have the object, then you would set the credentials that you're going to log in with. ClearQuest and Team Concert both have credentials that you are protected by a, a login scheme. And then with the uh, OSLC interfaces, you usually have a base uh, URI, uh, resource identifier, that is the starting point for all queries, et cetera, from that point. So you need to tell it that's, that's the information needed so that the module knows who what to know where it knows what to contact or who to contact. And then once you set that, then here I'm doing an OSLC where call. And uh, I guess in this case, I didn't actually give a good example of what a query would look like. Uh, and you need to know the project area that you're, that you're dealing with that you want to do the queries against. We're doing a type of change request queries uh, third argument would be the actual text of the query. And then you can also limit what you, the response you get by the properties, that you can specify a list of properties that you're going to get back uh, instead of the full record. Once you, so that gives you back an RDF object. And then with the RDF object, you can ask for the query results as a list, as an array of, of records. And then here I show an example of how you uh, dereference the uh, array reference that you give. So you know, there's a for each of iterating over each item in the array. And then based on that item, then you can dereference one of the fields that's in the record. The RDF module in here uh, does takes the RDF as XML and then uses the XML simple module to convert the XML into a Perl structure, and then the RDF module also tries to, uh, when you get RDF, you get lots of pieces of the information, but they aren't particularly put into a hierarchy of information, so the module takes and tries to resolve references so that when you look at it later, you, you can hierarchically refer to the information that you've gotten back. Um, Next is the uh, work item update example. Similar thing, you create the module, or get an instance of the class, set the credentials, the base URI, and you call the method. And uh, the interesting thing about the update uh, is the, how you tell it what you want to update. So uh, we see here that you create a, uh, an array of the things you want to update, and then there's each array item has two two fields, and it's the left side is the field you want to update, and then the right side is the new value you want to put into the field. 
So you have to do some, you know, at least you have to know the structure of what you're getting back so that you can then change the value and then put the information back in. Um, so here, like in the second point of the update, is that this custom field, I want to change its uh, its subfield called RDF resource, and I want to give it the new URL to the new value is an example there. So the syntax of the text that you give there, you can actually do, multi, you can point into multi-levels of the of the struct data structure that you're trying to change. And I'll show a little bit of that in an example later. Um, the modules, the package also comes with a couple uh, command line scripts that you can use uh, to do stuff just by entering things on the command line. One is the tool called RTC Client, and it gives, it needs a similar sets of information, which is the base URI, the user, the password. And uh, the first use is there is, in, in general, you, since the key concept of OSLC is that you can just request the identifier of something, which is it, which it's full the URL, and then you can get information back. The most simple case is you can give any URL to something, and the, and it'll attempt to give you back the response uh, to the standard output. Uh, then the other interfaces are again exposed similarly uh, in in the in the and then the next one same sort of behavior is the clear quest. And, and Sean just mentioned I'm running short on time, so uh, these are the dependencies that the module depends on and uh, some of what we were thinking about doing next would be the ability to create new change request records. I just thought a minute ago that we probably should uh, be able to run uh, predefined queries. I didn't implement any of that. and. Again, we want to open up the module for contributions from the community. Uh, at this point, uh, myself, I've achieved what I needed to with the modules. So until I probably hit the need to do something else with them, I'm probably not. It's not my key focus to add new features. But again, as people use them and and want to and then add behavior to it, it would be great if those things could come back into the module so others could use it also. And uh, again. Uh, we had a demo, but as Sean mentioned, I, at, in my same time, that I uh, probably don't have time for that. But uh, I just had a couple simple uh, examples here where I would ask for a work item and I would get the properties back, and a case where I would do an update uh, of the description is what those would have looked like. Um, so should I send send it back to you, Sean? Yeah, sure. We can stop here for any questions, and, and Max, we can also – 